adjust your set. Good evening. Tonight we look at the economic axe. Why does it fall? Where does it fall? And who put boot polish in my bed on Tuesday? <laughs> Come on, own up. If you don't own up, I shall talk about the economy for two hours. I shall. Very well. I'm fired. <laughs> Good morning, Chancellor. Oh. I've got the latest government spending figures here, and I know you won't believe it, but I believe that we can save 128 million pounds. Oh, how are you? So, well, look here, Forsyth. I'm not terribly good at figures. Uh, I feel no level, and um, quite honestly, you'll just have to make it a bit simpler. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, 128 million pounds, well, that's enough to buy 64 million see-through overcoats. <laughs> My word, that's enough to clothe every man, woman, and child in the country. Are you seriously suggesting we spend 64 million pounds on see-through overcoats for people we don't even know? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, wait, oh no, Chancellor, no. I'm just using it to illustrate my point. Um, let me see now. Let's see if I can make it a little clearer. Good yes. Uh, <clears throat> now, let us say that your jacket, you see, represents the total economy. Oh, yes, see? yes. Now, if we take off 128 million pounds, like a... Uh, like this, you see. There yeah. now, already you can see that that is a sizable reduction. Yes, yes, now, yes indeed. Yes. Yes. Now, now, on top of this, we will save 22 million pounds in unnecessary social expenditure, which, although is a great deal smaller, is by no means less noticeable. Um, uh, may I? Oh, oh by all means. Thank you. Yes, there, you see. <coughs> yes. Now, we, yes, yes. we pay back a small loan to the United States of mm. America, you see. There, like that. But yes. at the same time, we'll get a £40 million loan from the Swiss. Ah, uh, no, no, uh, quite. No, um, oh, oh, yes. You see, we'll get back a £40 million uh, pound from oh, the Swiss. Yeah, there, I'm beginning to get the picture. Oh. Good. <laughs> now, plus the cuts in the local government grants, you see, that will take out a bit more. Ah. Yes, and the re complete removal of the foreign tariffs barrier. There, <laughs> see? <laughs> now, this will probably level out our balance of payments deficit and should result by July in a rise in exports of about 20%. Oh, well, that, that's, that's very impressive, Forsyth. Well, do you honestly think we can sell 64 million pairs of see-through overcoats? <laughs> think of contacting you without attracting attention. <laughs> yes, we look at espionage. Is our security network riddled with foreign agents? Today, we put that question to a top British security official. Well, is the British Secret Service riddled with foreign agents? Oh, neat, Prushki, neat, Vyeshni. Definitely neat. <laughs> well, tonight we've got another British Secret Service agent to come along and talk to you. He will be in disguise for security reasons. And because he likes it. Good evening. I want to talk to you tonight about some of the latest methods we are using in our work. I'm afraid I can't tell you my name. I'm known simply as M. M for Morris. Oh, oh no, no. No, would you forget that, please? My name's not Morris at all. No. Um, it's a Melanie. Melanie. <laughs> Melanie Johnson. Oh, uh, Jackson! Jackson! Jenkinson! Jenkinson, yes. I'm Melanie Jenkinson, Agent 237. Oh, 8823. <laughs> now, in our work, we use many cunning devices. For instance, this disguise I'm wearing consists of a mask which alters the entire shape of my face, apart from the ears. <laughs> <laughs> now, something no spy can afford to be without is a camera but this must be inconspicuous and cunningly concealed. So we've developed this, a perfectly ordinary Thompson submachine gun. But when fired at someone, it takes a series of really excellent snaps. <laughs> now the complete spy must also have an unintrusive method, an efficient method of overpowering his enemies. <laughs> One of those bricks slipped in someone's drink can be deadly. <laughs> but the latest and most exciting development has been in the pill field. It consists of this little disappearing pill. One swallow of this, and you disappear completely. There you are, you see. Simple, effective, and British. And now, although you can't see me, I am about to swallow the fantastic 
reappearing pill, which we have just developed. So here goes. Mm. <laughs> of course, it's not perfect yet by a long way. <laughs> national politics that information is sought and bought. Industrial espionage plays a major part today in big business enterprises. Green jelly is untried in Manchester. Horses and conflicts bring exemplary pimples. What is the password? What? What is the password? What is? Is, is. Is it good? Yes. <laughs> Have you any information for me? Shh! Act inconspicuously. They may be watching us. Act so. Ah, what a jolly good bird, fine weather we are not having, is it so, yes? Oh, yes, yes. What jolly, jolly weather. The British are building a new custard factory at Swindon. <laughs> Goodbye, we'll be toddling off now. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Go Keep up the good work, number 72A. <laughs> yes! Oh, goodbye! Ever so goodbye! 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 Oh, gee, I'm terribly sorry. What a silly thing to do. I do beg your pardon. Any information for me today? Yes. The British are building a new custard factory at Swindon. Thanks a lot, Mr. Sliveroski, or whatever your name is. <laughs> ah, yeah, hello. Uh, the British are building a new custard factory in Swindon, okay? How did they find that out? Why are the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band so popular? Why do they always appear on this program? Why do they wear such funny costumes? Why do they keep putting boot polish in my bed? What do they do it for? Why has Neil Innes got flu so I've got to do his bit? Why? Why are they going to play Love is a Cylindrical Piano? Have they no sense of decency? Why? <laughs> say right away what a wonderful crowd you are, you will pay for a tenor, so step right up, I want to show you a truly international star, some of you may love her, some of you may hate her, but let me introduce the baffling Mrs. Slater. <laughs> delicious. How can you tell if it's tune when you're under the moon? It's very amusing. Do you do it professionally? If a piano is playing your favorite tune, it's in tune. No, I'm an amateur. <laughs> you can tell if it's tune if you're under the moon and you're dancing. Love is a cylindrical piano. Today this talent can't be ignored, swallow that big sword. This next act could be construed to be rather rude, but let's introduce and keep your fingers crossed from France, Les Der Collapsos. Very wonderful. 
all, I'd like to introduce the next artist, Chance to Shine. I'd like you to meet my wife, please. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> this one is um, the Sammy the Intelligent Seal. like some ice cream, oh, Miss Pringle? Thank you very much. <clears throat> fool! Crazy fool! Don't you understand what you're doing to me? What? Anywhere but Africa! I'm sorry, are you... Uh... Oh, oh, terribly sorry. I'm... See, I'm an actor. I'm from the theatre next door and I'm just going through my lines. Please don't let me disturb you. You just carry on. Oh, right, I will. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it, do you hear? Stop torturing me like this! Excuse me. Yes? Uh, would you mind, you know, without spoiling rehearsal, if you kept your voice down a bit in practice, please? Oh, yes, I will. I'm terribly sorry. Thank you. You worm. <laughs> you miserable wretch. You don't care about anyone else, do you, eh? Answer me. Would you pass... No, no. <laughs> a thousand times no. I've done enough for the likes of you. Would you pass... Well, I mean, this may surprise you, but I've had enough. Look, <laughs> I've had enough of your prattling on. I came here for a quiet evening and all I get is an idiot like you. I'm going, leaving, driven out and it's all your fault. Good night. I say, that's my line. <laughs> magic land, the land of the live theatre. We take you over now to Turbot Road Police Station where Q Division are presenting their pantomime, Cinderella. Excuse me, sir. Yes, madam, what can I do for you? Just a routine inquiry, sir. Indeed, indeed. As I was proceeding through this forest, uh, which, by the way, I've reason to believe is enchanted, All right. I observed that I'd mislaid my way. I believe you may be able to help me in my inquiries. Why, certainly, fair maiden. <laughs> could I have your name, please? Uh, yes, it's Cinderella, sir. Cinderella, sir. <laughs> Oh, I see. So you're a Cinderella, sir. Uh, that would appear to be the case, yes. Well, I have been hearing reports <laughs> of your beauty and allure. Oh, uh, you have, have you? And I must inform you that I am captivated by your grace and loveliness. Uh, you are, are you? And furthermore, I must ask you to accompany me to the ball. But first, if you wouldn't mind answering a few routine questions. Excuse me. Have you ever seen this... Oh. <laughs> C 
slipper before. Oh, why, yes, I have. In that case, I must ask you to try it on. Oh, if you insist. Right. Oh. <clears throat> on the stool. Oh. Oh. Uh. Hello. Uh. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it fits. Oh, well, ain't that a lucky break for me, then? Hang on a minute. I recognise those dirty great feet anywhere. Here, your grabber went worse. No, ain't what are you no, doing in our no, panto, no, grabber? No. You was a lagging down at the scrub. Me, what are you doing in here? Me. I'll have to take you down a fairy grotto. <laughs> Last week, we saw how Captain Fantastic brilliantly eluded the terrifying backward nation. Now, as he takes a night flight away from the beach, his control calls him. His orders are to divert and deal immediately with a nasty outbreak of teapot snatching in Surrey. He prepares at once for Splashed up. This is Captain Fantastic speaking. Having landed on terra firma, I immediately looked round for the scene of the crime. So, flying teacups had landed. As I was investigating the mysterious object, I felt a tap on my shoulder. <laughs> Was this the tea leaf? In a flash, I was after him. It was daylight robbery. Things were getting serious. the whole village teapotty. <laughs> Nothing could hold me back from apprehending him. Finally, I cornered him. I demanded to know what he was up to. I read his stomach carefully, none the wiser. This was getting tedious. I made a bid for the teapot, but he beat me down. He headed back to the cup. But by now the housewives were with me and we were determined to catch him. When we arrived, the flying cup had, had gone. Obviously, I had scared him off. Oh, oh well, there you really. Another mission successfully accomplished. Though, mind you, the whole affair seemed a bit of a storm in a teacup to me. Now, can 
one, Captain Fantastic, find Mrs. Black again? How far has she got with her horrible plans? Find out in next week's edition of Captain Pathetic. Um, uh, fantastic. <laughs> down to your Sunday joint. Or eat your sandwiches. Or look inside your sausage roll. And wonder who it is. <laughs> when your mutton chop makes you want to stop. Or a piece of fish pie goes down the wrong way. Remember. British food is tasty. And British food is nice. So let the Frenchman keep his escargot and the China man his rice. Because a piece of roast beef and Yorkshire put will do with you the French for well no good. So never complain about British Dutch. It's the oldest in the world. When Mafeking fell in the Boa Woa, the lads stretched out their hands for Moa. Give us a piece of shepherd's pie. The smelly soldiers cried. Or a runner being from Lincolnshire and six penny worth of fried pie. It's, it's British, British food that has got, got us here. here. And by Jove, it will get us back. So give us lots of gravy, Sarge, in the knapsack on my back. Yes, British food is meaty and British food is tough. Just let me see the Englishman who sent me back in a truck. Oh, we're sorry, but we're thankful for our dumplings and our carrots. While the men from Wagga Wagga eat the insides out of Paris. You are the great about British food. It's the oldest in the world. Never complain about me, not the old 